Hey y'all, so at first I wasn't going to say anything about Jordan Neely, I was just going to let this one slide, but I found out he was homeless and mentally ill, so I have to say something. For those of you who don't know, Jordan Neely was a homeless black man who was recently uh, strangled to death by an uh, ex-marine put into a chokehold for 15 minutes. More and more details are coming out about this, but from what I know so far, he was just yelling at people on the train. He wasn't assaulting anyone, even though he does have a history of assaulting people. Apparently, he has 44 arrests on his record. People like to throw that around. Um, there's no talk about how many convictions he has. He just has a lot of arrests. And as a person who is black and homeless, it's very easy to get 44 arrests that can have nothing to do with violence. There's also people saying that he punched an elderly woman in the face. There's some things circulating saying that he didn't like taking his meds and so on and so forth. The way people have no idea what it's like to be homeless is really shining in this conversation. I don't know what kind of medication he was on, but as a homeless person who also has mental illness, who is also on medication, I can definitely see how somebody who is uh, unsheltered or it's hard for them to get in some kind of sheltering situation, would not want to take their medication because medic medication is very serious. It can alter the way that you think. It can alter your sleep schedule. It can alter so many things that may think that, um, may think, that may put somebody who is not in a sheltered situation in a worse situation, like maybe they would become incapable of defending themselves or their things if somebody tried to attack them or steal from them or a long list of other things. But, like, this whole focus on, like, oh, he's homeless and uh, crazy or whatever word you want to use, and therefore he should have been on medication, it's his fault for not taking his medication, totally wipes away the rest of his situation of being homeless. Now, if he had been in a safe place where he could stably lay his head and put his things, and he wasn't taking his medication, I would see this differently. But people have no, I, people who aren't homeless and who have never been homeless and have never been homeless in this economy, shout out to you old people who were homeless when you were younger, but you're not homeless anymore, but have no idea what it's like to be homeless now. There's so much rigmarole and hoop jumping. You have to go across town to get food. Then you have to go across town to get hygiene. Then you have to go across town to get a, a shower or whatever. And then if you stay in a shelter, you have to go back across town to go to the shelter for check-in before curfew or whatever that shelter schedule is. I made a whole fucking uh, like thing about that. And like being homeless in and of itself is just busy. Now, I don't know this particular guy's situation, but we really need to like actually look at what homelessness is and how busy homeless people actually are like to really understand what's going on here. Because there's a huge propaganda, there's a bug in here, there's a huge propaganda that all homeless people are just crazy, one shoe, unkempt, don't go into the shelters, um, like, and just talk to themselves, dragging their knuckles every day. That's not what being homeless is. Some people who are already bad off become homeless and their situation gets worse. Or they were doing okay and they became homeless and their situation rapidly deteriorated. There are a lot of things that can happen and homelessness can be the factor of it. And homelessness would be incredibly preventable if we lived under a government that fucking cared, but we don't. And what makes this situation all the more complicated is that you're always going to see people like me. That I have access to technology, I can speak for myself and all this here. But the chances that you're going to be able to be in a situation where people like Neely get humanized is so much less likely. And we really need to put thought into why that is. Up until this point, we haven't really been thinking about how us common folk should or shouldn't have an opinion about who gets to live or die. And why representation is important and why people getting to represent themselves is important like the reason why social media and stuff have become more important like why you can see me in here now that's important 
But people with the hardcore mental illnesses that lose themselves in the process, like Neely, they don't get what I get. And it's absolutely a shame that what I do is considered a privilege. This should be basic. Now we need to step back a little bit because if this is true, I want to hone in on this. At the time in which he was murdered, he wasn't murdered for one of his many alleged assaults. He was murdered because he was yelling at people. He wasn't assaulting anyone. And this is according to the people who have contact with the witnesses or the witnesses themselves may have spoken out. I'm not sure where this is coming from. Not sure if this is true. But if it is true, this guy is a fucking murderer. And there are people with the full-blooded American audacity saying that this guy deserved to get murdered because he assaulted people even though he wasn't assaulting anyone at the time. And as far as I know, none of his assault victims are dead. What it boils down to is people saying it's okay to kill a black man for being annoying. And of course, I take issue with that. If I, a person who is not a Marine, has never had any sort of training, knows that 15 minutes is too long to have somebody in a chokehold, that definitely means an ex-Marine knows that he shouldn't have had anybody in a chokehold for 15 minutes. I am definitely not here to disparage anyone's right to defend themselves. And at the same time, there was nothing to defend themselves against themselves against if it is true that he was just yelling at the time and choking somebody for 15 minutes isn't self-defense. That's murder. And let's add the real layer onto it. Let's add on that this man was black and homeless and the guy who did it was white and housed or white presenting, white passing, whatever. Now let's zoom back out and call this thing what it really is. This black man was publicly lynched and the peoples whose job is historically based off of catching slaves and returning them to their plantations, let him walk. And you don't have to believe me. Research the history of the police and you will find that that is very true. You Don't take my word for it. Do your own research. And what really gets me about the United States of America is that we as black people have to go through life knowing that if we're going through anything, some random white person can just kill us and the world will just continue to turn like there's not a whole bunch of systemic issues to address. We are expected to keep this white supremacist masked imperialist machine turning while we know that we live under the threat of violence every day. What really woke me up to that was George Floyd. Black people were still expected to go to work, even though we now all have the knowledge that we can be publicly lynched and there will be people justifying our public lynching. And that doesn't sound crazy to anybody but us. That's the weird part. So this video is long enough. And I shot it vertically because I was thinking I was going to be able to say this under, under a minute, but there's no real way to address this issue under a minute. Um, fuck America. <laughs>